you have an Ender 3 that you've been thinking about upgrading the Clipper? I have an old V2 that I decided to upgrade. I did it because so many people online will tell you, hey, you can do this in 15 minutes. But is that really the case? Let me tell you a little bit about what I went through upgrading my V2 to Clipper. Stick around to the end because I'll tell you, knowing what I know now, would I do it again? So you can break up the install into three sections. One, getting the operating system on your Raspberry Pi. So this is mainsail or fluid. And I use the Raspberry Pi OS installer in order to get mainsail. And for the most part, this was an extremely simple process, although I did run into challenges. For me personally, I could not get the edit settings to work, which meant that I couldn't configure the Raspberry Pi OS to connect to my Wi-Fi automatically. This required me to connect it to the Ethernet jack, SSH into my Raspberry Pi, and then configure the Ethernet. Mainsail has this help document on how to configure Raspberry Pi to get connected to Ethernet. Don't use that. Raspi config is by far a much simpler way to do it, but you do either have to SSH in or connect a keyboard and monitor and be familiar with the terminal in order to be able to make this adjustment. So for step one, all in all, it was a fairly simple process, but be aware that you may have those challenges. Perhaps you can get edit settings to work, but I did download the latest Raspi uh, OS installer. Wasn't able to get it to work. So let's talk about getting the firmware. I use KUA, it's actually an acronym. It's a script that allows you to plug in specific parameters based on your printer, which you'll find in the printer CFG file that Mainsail provides. You configure that, it builds the firmware. Now, one of the things that I was thinking is that I would just flash the firmware from the Raspberry Pi onto the motherboard of the printer. And everybody says, you know, don't do that the first time, transfer it to a micro SD and flash it with a micro SD. And I just kind of figured, oh no, I am a computer guy. I can absolutely do it the first time. It's not going to be a big deal. You know, I flashed tons of firmwares in the past wasn't able to get it to work. So I should have just listened to everybody else, not got a big head like I did. Uh, just So I ended up using WinSCP to copy the firmware to uh, a micro SD card and flash the printer. Um, one of the things I did, you got to make sure and do is pull the LCD cable so that the LCD isn't connected when you're flashing the firmware, especially on a V2. Um, the Clipper doesn't support using the V2 LCD, at least not near as I could find. Every piece of information I could find just doesn't seem to work. The Pro LCD, you can't actually get configured to work, but the V2 LCD, it doesn't appear like that's an option. So one challenge you have is how do you know when the firmware is done, right? Because you can't see the LCD. Well, one of the things that you can do is just keep the Raspberry Pi connected, and at, as you restart, it will show the device so once it detects once the firmware is on the printer and the firmware is booted up and it's running uh, mainsail will start communicating with it and it'll actually display the printer there so that's kind of how you can know that you know the um, the firmware got flashed correctly but yeah it is a little bit of an unnerving process i think you, anytime you flash a firmware you know you're always worried about breaking your device that's always a risk so i mean go slow don't uh, do anything stupid. Don't power off your device mid firmware update, anything like that for sure. So getting the firmware all configured wasn't a huge challenge. And there are lots of tutorials that show you how to use WinSCP to copy the firmware and then to a micro SD card and then flash the printer. But just know that that's what you're getting yourself into. That's what you're signing up for. Finally, the last step you have to do is configure your printer CFG file. Really just kind of configure all of the main sale, the, configure main sale how you want it set up. I mean, are you gonna have time lapse? You can configure that. Do you have a CR touch or a BL touch or some type of bed auto leveling system that you're gonna have to configure? These are all things that you wanna factor in and kind of be aware of, right? So for me, I had an aftermarket BL touch, which this BL touch doesn't work well unless you have unless you go through the configuration. 
So I had to go through the documentation, look for how, how to run tests on the BL Touch, do various tests. And then once I got all the, through all the tests, I was able to figure out what the specific configuration I needed for that BL Touch to get that to work. You also have things like uh, screw tilt adjust, which is a fantastic feature, especially for a printer like the Ender 3, where it probes the center as well as the four sections where the screws are. And then it tells you to turn the screws clockwise or counterclockwise. And based on that, you can level the bed, which makes the auto bed leveling uh, much closer and the Z axis adjust for a bed that's not uh, level makes that a lot less so your printers your prints go faster it's a lot, lot less wear on your z-axis for me i would say that even after having clipper on my printer for about a month now i'm still not done editing the printer cfg i don't think that's something i'll ever be done with i'm always making tweaks always looking for different things that i can add to it recently i added the ability to see the MCU temperature as well as the Raspberry Pi temperature. So the control unit on the uh, actual Ender 3 as well as the Raspberry Pi, I can check its temperatures. I can have a max temperature, which causes it to shut down. It starts to get too hot. This is one of those things where if you just want a printer that just works and you're not interested in tinkering with it, I don't know that I would really recommend you going and trying to install Clipper. One thing that I haven't touched yet is the ability to create um, input shaping to increase my print speeds. And it's funny because when I actually installed Clipper the first time, my mindset was that I'm going to install Clipper. The default configuration of Clipper, because it's using the Raspberry Pi for some of the calculations and how to uh, move the print head, I assumed immediately that that would just automatically make my prints faster. And that couldn't be further from the truth. Installing Clipper does not make your prints faster. Does that mean that I wouldn't install Clipper or that I regret doing it on my V2? Absolutely not. The fact that I can have a webcam set up and I can monitor my prints from downstairs is super nice. I can stop a print if it's failing. I, from a remote location. The ability to see how the bed leveling, the actual diagram, how it charts it out and shows you how level the bed is, super nice feature. You don't get that um, on a stock ender. And then I am still very much interested in input shaping and pressure advance and getting the printer printing faster. That would be super nice to be able to do that. So all in all, I absolutely love mainsail i love clipper i love having it on my system it has been so very nice having it combined with orca slicer so that it's just all bundled into one nice little suite where i can kind of control everything right from one application is so nice i would definitely encourage anyone who likes to tinker with their printers you investigate it see if it's something that you want but yeah so that's kind of my experience you know i would say that when it comes to getting the OS installed, if you can edit those settings, that is that would make it so, so smooth. But even without that, it's not a super challenging process. Updating the firmware, yeah, you got to use WinSCP, or at least I had to. If you're able to figure it out where you can do it directly from the Raspberry Pi, that's fantastic. When it comes to the final step of actually writing the printer CFG, just know that that's a continual process. You're always going to be going in there tweaking it. As you learn different values and different settings from different YouTube videos you watch, you're going to find people that are doing different things with their Clipper install. You're going to modify your printer CFG again. So it's never going to be a one and done. This is going to be a process where you're going to constantly be tinkering with your printer, changing things, making adjustments. And that's all part of the fun. Anyway, until next time. Yep.